using Mogal death from a death from belows, but what he did do, he used the ultimate to set up kills, not control. only just from tight from Confrey, but for the rest of Titan as well. Zone control was the big key there. What I would like to see from Dignitas this game though, is maybe mix it up a bit. They chose that Ares first pick. It's mm -hmm. not worked out for them because Jewelane didn't do great. Sure. I don't I think things could have been differently if Frezzy did got off onto a good foot. If Jewelane got off to a good foot, Frezzy could have influenced the game a little bit more, especially with mid and jungle being in the hand. But when that three, the mid jungle and support are all in bad situations, it's very difficult to come back from and when you're against titan that's where they excel is those three roles specifically with those picks the Ares doesn't function well from behind hunbats doesn't really he's not a god until level five and it took a long time for that ultimate to really come online so little trouble with those picks i'm not ready to say that they should absolutely switch just yet but as we enter picks and bans for game number two we'll leave that up to the professionals and this team dignitas they're going to be able to get well, it's going back to his like, uh, oh, looks like the punch. first the first pick will be F dot. The second pick will be Hindu man. And going into the real picks and bands. Second pick we'll over see. you? Yeah. Over you? I am top pick, top band material. You a meme. No, I'm not. That's what the internet says. You're just banter. I'm just bow ties and banter. That's pretty much what Hun Bats brings to the table as well. So if you want to be a Hun Bats, I'll be a Sir Cat. Titan gonna opt for first pick this time around. Fenrir band out. Once no again? dog. Once again, they took it out last game. They're going to take it out again. They've switched sides this time around as well. Bologna taken off the table away from Repicast in the jungle, which he's very comfortable on. And we've seen a little bit of that out of Atomax here too. Mm -hmm. Bologna's just a strong character mm -hmm. in general, able to provide the zone control with the ultimate. Don't be, don't be surprised when you read just how many numbers are provided with it. On top of that as well, we did see a lot of the EU boys at the LAN playing that in the support role too. So mm -hmm. keep an eye if it does get through. We may see it in the support role sometimes this season. One more time, Ymir banned out by Titan. So shot of Frosty act more than Frezzy, but Frezzy can play very well as well. I think last game, this was a shot at Frezzy. After seeing Frosty Egg turn up and sort of a return to form, that's what we saw Frosty Egg mm -hmm. do previously. That give me your ban is at Frosty Egg. <laughs> but they banned away Giannis away from Pretty Prime, but in doing so, they gave up the ban they banned last time, which was Al Kwong. And Repicas, he can play that, and I believe we can, Ataraxi can too. That's the price you pay when you ban something out of respect. I mean, talking about justice, that's that's why everybody, or talking about Myrmidons, that's why everybody's so excited about Mogao. He plays these off-kilter gods, yep. which force you into a quote-unquote bad ban. That Giannis ban, not a bad ban by definition because of how well it was executed by Pretty Prime, but it opens Team Dignitas up to have to play against Al Kwong, which is widely considered one of the best gods in the game. I agree with Dignitas' choice of banning away Giannis, however. The reason they banned it is because when they got behind, which you know they got behind early, the mobility uh -oh. that we could see coming out from Pretty Prime and that Giannis caused so many more issues, so the game snowballed harder to an extent and was more difficult to get back into. The Ares not going to go the way of Team Dignitas this time around. It's going to go to Kanye Life, who I think is one of the best Ares players in the world. Had to pick a support there, did Dignitas. That they had to do because the Ares draft means that they can start banning out in the counterban phase if they don't against the gods that are very effective against Ares. Athena, global presence. Going to be useful. Don't forget, folks, I'm not just spitting out hyperbole here as Scylla's banned out by Team Dignitas. Ares is the character that almost single-handedly took Worlds away from Cloud9. Cloud9 needed to ban this character in order to take home the World Championship. So Kanye Life looks so, so strong on this. And like you said, the support had to be chosen, which allowed Team Dignitas to ban a mid laner. They're going to further take out Scylla, and then likewise on the side of Titan, they have a Hunter and Neath, so they can ban out the Medusa against Dignitas. Now, they may also run that Neath in the solo lane as well. Of We've course. not seen much of it, but it could happen. But so far, if you notice, Ares CC, his chains not just apply cripple, they also apply a slow. Uh -huh. Neath, with the root, they're setting up for CC for Al Kwong to be effective. Don't be surprised if we see an Agony, I suspect, here. More than likely in that mid lane. Thor being picked up for the jungle, tips the hand okay. of Titan. We're going to see Al Kwong in the solo lane, which is a spicy pick for Ataraxia. It is spicy. We've seen him on it once or twice, and there's the Acne pick, which yep. I predicted, because they're looking for a heavy CC lineup, so exactly. this Al Kwong can, if he has the opportunity to, he will go off, because the rest of his team are providing the CC that an Al Kwong really needs to get in and out. Now, Al Kwong has a number of tools, so this is this is not quite a four protect one comp. It's a four set up one comp. Mm -hmm. Expect to see a lot of assists across the board for Titan, and if all goes right, Replicas will be about 20 kills deep. On the other 
other side, Team Dignitas has a similar thing has a uh, similar thing going to last time around, where everything is generally spread out. But if they make it to the late game, Chronos exists. Well, they've got like to make extent three hyper carries. The reason I always class Isis to an extent as a hyper carry because if you hit him with a Spirit Ball into a circle of protection, a Hunter is deleted. You don't even have to charge the circle of protection. It's like Spirit Ball, circle of protection, job's done. Death. So their side, they've got three different people to attack in the later stages. In the early game, they're going to be looking for Sir Kurt, played by Frostiak this game, to see if he can actually weather through the early game and get them transition to the mid late. Titan playing very safe, and Confrey will be putting that Neath into the into the duo lane alongside the support player. And you know, I'm with you, Hindu man. I think Neath can still be played solo. Mid is probably a stretch, but I th with the Basically, the advent, the loss of Heartseeker is what took that flex viability of Neath away. I think she's still useful in that solo lane, still I able agree. to do what she wants to. I completely agree. The one thing about Comfrey this game as well, he's gone boots again and started beads this time around. Probably because he's up against the Athena for the slows, sorry, for the taunts. However, if he goes for this build over a Transcendence, Transcendence is so viable on Neath because of the fact that she gets free sustain from Unravel sure. and it adjusts to her power for the World Weaver shot. She gets a lot of good scaling off her abilities too. He could have gone for the Transcendence into Soul Eater. It looks like we're going to see Warrior Tabby into Soul Eater again this game. Just from the start, I, I, I'd have to agree with you. We might just see this as the starting build. Maybe he wanted to leave the base with the beads and just have that movement speed to Agreed. not waste the gold and then go into something like the Transcendence but the tran or otherwise. If you're going to go Transcendence, you normally want to start just because it costs so much it's to get almost 3,000 gold exactly. for the well, 2,600. I mean, when you buy the tier 2, you've got another 1,400 left to, left to buy before you can actually get it stacked. So we'll see where he ends up with this build now because a non-stack... Oh, wow. that double tap onto Frostiak. Frostiak with a hair of HP left on his bar. If there was one minion there and it was in range, that would have been, that would have been a dead scorpion. Very much so. So, what we're going to see now, Frostiak on half half, going to retreat to the jungle. He'll be fine though, because health potion as well is going to be able to heal up from getting those jungle camps with that Bumba's Mask. Take into account, Bumba's Mask does heal you after killing creeps in the jungle as well. So that'll give him a little bit of a healthier situation for the time being as we tune in with Comfrey. And this, I don't want to say wacky build, because I can understand there's always going to be crazy builds. I'm just surprised that we don't see a Transcendence. Yeah, it's a little bit of a surprise because of this god specifically, but by no means... The build isn't a poor choice. No, no, no. The build itself, in general, is not bad. It's just because I'm actually, it's on a different guard. On the other side, I'm actually super impressed by leaving the base with beads one. The setup that comes out of the taunt, Frostiak even, it's a scary CC possibility. So by leaving the base with beads one, hold that thought. Trouble? Not quite. Not real super trouble. Connie just putting a little bit of poke on. He takes some poke from those minions back too. But he should be fine. Obviously, he is. Uh, Reese, he's got health potions and one thing to note, multi-potions. Multi-potions very effective with the health. But so, leaving the base with beads one Hindu, it does more than just let you use beads. It will change the way the opponent thinks about engaging from the get-go. Oh, blink in from Frostiak looking for the pick. He actually does get hit by the wall, but spit ball. Not enough range on it. So close, but yet so far. The beats, though, going back to that that you were saying on Comfrey, it allows him to potentially go for a backflip, fail it, mm -hmm. and then backflip anyway because he gets out of the situation he was right. in. He's not going to want to use it too much, though, because once they know it's on cooldown, they can look to abuse him even more. Very, very, very much so. Look at the top. Minion kills. No surprise. It's mid lane. 35 on that Isis. Pretty much how it will be. Comfrey will, sorry, Variety will take off eventually, though, in the solo lane as Kronos. Once he gets a couple of his items online, Ataraxia has to play this one very, very defensively up against the Kronos. Unless he's going to commit all in, he has to just hold back and farm what he can. Similar to how a Loki would play sure. a lane up against somebody like Ra, for example. The, the wave clear that comes out of Kronos is very strong, and for the most part, relatively free. The Accelerate will allow Time Stop and Time Rift to just be able to be used for zero mana, exactly. and the wave just won't exist after about level 8 or level 9. Biggest key to Kronos is making sure you stop that wheel in the right zone for the right time of the game. Looking at for zone 3 or zone 4, uh, towards the late stage of the game, right. but zone 2 is the one you're really looking for during laning phase. Yeah, that, that's how you're going to clear the wave, and then as, as you said, really, zone 4 is where, where Kronos really makes his money attacking people with those basics. Well, so I'm trying to make money. Repicas going to take up to the sky here. Variety does not know. Will have his ultimate available, though. The dunk connects. The wall connects. 
Okay. Too strong. Confrey involved in that kill as well. In fact, his ultimate from across the way winds up getting the kill. So Pretty Prime got the snipe last time around. Confrey, not ready to be outdone, picks up his sniper rifle in this contest. Titan with the first blood. Perfectly timed as well, though. If you notice how everything went off perfectly, the rewind was just being channeled when that World Weaver hit as well. They knew exactly when they were going, and they timed that to perfection. Left hand mid camps, pretty prime with a slight back step. Gonna be a mistake for him. Spirit Ball on the way of Dignitas will not secure either. And pretty prime gets both mid camps. I'm surprised they were so passive about that though. That sure. was the other thing with me. I was like, oh, it's only, a, I mean, I guess it's only an Isis, but it was <laughs> Isis 2v1. Sure. Thor ultimate was down, but Agni has bombs too. They could have looked for more aggression then. Talking about aggression, Comfrey really feeling himself in this honor roll today. Kanye Life with the blink in. The chains are already on the those. target. Here comes the ultimate beats. Check. No beads on the side of the support. And that's going to be trouble on the Hunter. We did actually see Athena get away, but that will Weaver did have great use of the backflip. People underestimate the fact that that does damage too. Now, the reason a lot of times we see this and we call it a, we, we call it a BM kill. That was in, in, that was so important for the kill. Shadow Nightmare going to be here a hair late because the minions were in the way. Basic attacks were not going to be able to go through those minions. It would take about three to four basics to kill them, and Spirit Arrow was on cooldown. Backflip was the only way to secure that kill for the Neath effectively. Go ahead and get it. Confrey looking strong just as last game. Really nice work from the boys of Titan once again. Could Frezzy have done something differently with that ultimate, though? I mean, he could have ulted onto Renz to give him some extra protections, sure. I guess, but he would have put himself in a bad spot is the reason. I think a lot of people at home may be like, why didn't he just ult his teammate? Because he needed the protections too. Right. Well, he probably would have fallen down there as well because he was very low on HP. Also, not for nothing, Hindu. When you get Ares ulted, you don't exactly have a lot of time to pick and choose your target. Not really. Might have just hit four and clicked. Wall comes out, double tap does connect with Frezzy. There's the bomb rains down as well. More poke than anything else, but Thor's going up. Thor's gonna look to save Pretty Prime. He lands aggressively. One dash is down, and nobody wants to look at the Isis, despite her being all alone. Team Dignitas with a great dis disengage. All this aggression there was just for mid harpies, and the mid harpies still are not flashing yet. They're just preemptively setting each other up to try and get control. You notice how the fight happened? Dignitas went, all right, boys, all right, we'll yep. step out. They're your harpies. We'll come again next time around and try and fight one more. Risk versus reward. I mean, if that exact situation happened over a Gold Fury, Dig might have re-engaged. Yeah, exactly. But re it's just mid harpies. It's just mid harpies. They're not worth that much right now. Back harpies, technically, to an extent, are a lot stronger <laughs> and they're a lot safer to be taken. Safer is the key. Big key. Kanye, going to be rotating mid lane again. No escape is available. Keep an eye on him. But he just walked over that ward that you saw as Repicas. Having a little look in the dual head again. And giving it a little love tap over to Variety. This is important because, as you said before, the wave clear out of the Kronos is just going to be so strong. So by just providing a little bit of poke, think about how scary this Alquan can be, especially with an execute. Oh. It looks like Kanye's in a lot of trouble there. The beads is actually going to help him out. The no Beat escape check. as well. The ultimate from Frostyak will keep him alive with the ultimate being channeled from Frostyak for the protections too. Great use of abilities from both sides there to stay alive. For, there is such a small amount of time. Great play by Frostyak. It was, it was great from Frostyak to realize that he didn't have a situation to get out of. If you notice his oh, item yeah. build there, does not have beads, but his ultimate does give him immunity. Mid lane again, no aggression. One more time into Kanye. Those Wingus will connect, and Reppy's going to run away. He can't pick up the last couple of hits that needed to bring down Shadow Nightmare. Good play from Dig. Dignitas on the board early on here. Uh, this is one third of the total kills they had last match. It's a better situation already for them. Because what they're doing with this variety Kronos pick here is they're forcing Repicast to come over and shut him down. Exactly. They don't shut down a Kronos, he'll just get bigger. And oh, Frezzy ate too Problem much. Problem on Frezzy. Frezzy stunned down. Is there a follow up from Titan? There is not. Sirket takes a little bit of the brunt of the poke to allow Athena to get out of there, no problem. Chrono Salt is down, and much like Agni Dash, this is being shouted through the comps. But Atrax is very low in health now, and Sir Ket is swinging in here. He's looking for the illusion Toast. to get away. Can Frostyak find the... He can. He'll find the Cobra's kissed and his life. I'm not sure Variety even needed the assistance there. Variety, uh, look... I mean, we've seen Variety's Chronos before. Yeah, I mean, Variety's Kronos is up and around there. Some of the matchups we've seen him in, though, he's been against people that have known how to deal with Kronos. Kronos sure. is semi in the scene, but he's not played that much, and when people don't see him very often, it's hard to prepare against him and know how to deal with him time and time again. 
for the likes of um, Mogao, for example. Right. He had a good time against Varietes Kronos in both those games because he knew how to deal with the poke and sustain of Kronos. Look at this difference. Now, we mentioned how this was a much different game for Team Dignitas because Titan really didn't get off to the start they did last time. Confrey didn't get that memo. He's a level and a half ahead of his opponent. Just, he is running this lane every way he wants. He's but clearing it fast if he wants to. Now he's sort of slowing it down. He has free reign. Here's one of the things about Neath, though. She's a controlling hunter. And that's what she's looking to do with that World Weaver channel that you saw there. Control the pace of the game more than anything else. As the game goes on, however, she's not going to be a hyper carry. She's not on the likes of Rama's level. Right. She's not going to do the insane amount of damage that you can see out of the other hunters. So she has to abuse this early game and get this lead that she has. It's also a, it's also a conscious choice coming out from Titan. We mentioned it earlier with the Anoraxia setup. You choose Neath over a different hunter just like you choose an Isis over a Scylla. You're not looking for that raw damage out of Neath. You're looking for the setup for the rest of the team to do that damage. Oh, yeah, he's right now, Dignitas is the one dealing out the damage, and the kill goes the way of the jungler, Frostiac. Hold up a second, because over in the right-hand lane as Solo well, we lane. did see, sorry, the yeah, Solo yep. lane, we did actually see Variety fall there to the gank from Repicas. I realize what Ataraxia did here. He saw the threat of a potential Gold Fury, yep. rotates in to defend, but Agni's in trouble. Damage on a Pretty Prime. Here comes Al Kuang. Pretty Prime seals the deal. Athena ults absolutely nowhere, but there's no control on the side of Titan to really stop her unless Repikos shows up. He does exactly that, stands in front of her, and Ataraxia gets another kill. Two That's going to be the second kill for the Titan solo later. Really important to go for those two quick kills as well. Prime's going to return back to base. There was a potential for a Gold Fury there. Chose against it, however, because they didn't have the boy Kanye with him just yet. And I guess they were worried about the re-initiation re potentially coming out from Variety, who had just spawned too. But that's what you're looking for from Ataraxia, and this is why we're seeing Repicas go to that solo lane. If he can relieve the, the stress that's on him from this Kronos, yeah. he can get to these team fights and cause problems. And Ataraxia, he's, he's, he's just making it happen. 2-1-2 two, two on the slash line, and... Anytime he walks into a fight, he just sort of shrugs mm -hmm. and says, I guess this god's getting eaten. Really no place for anybody to escape the Aokwong when combined with the control comp that Titan picked up. It's a prime example as well of what I was saying about Ataraxia, and I was worried about what his god pull would be like. Well, he's showing me he's got an, Ata he's got, he's showing me he's got an Aokwong already. And, and this is I mean, this is the spicy pick, right? Mm -hmm. You see, sure, it's just, it's just shock. It, it, there's other characters. But when you're taking a look at this solo lane as we look at Ataraxia versus Variety, Ao Kuang is the fringe pick. It's the Cyclone mm -hmm. Spin-esque pick, and Ataraxia is bringing it out. All right, you should know there's some pressure coming on here because that World Weaver was a little bit too early, but he's not early enough to survive, and he gets taken down again as once again we see Dignitas try to pressure the mid lane, but already the boys knew it was coming. Neath. The World Weaver's... I, I felt the World Weaver was a little bit early then, but it was okay. Well, no. The, so here, here's the thing. The World Weaver... The World Weaver early... Maybe, but what it does is it—it it, just like the level one beats, it forces you to play differently. It might not get the kill hit, but it forces you to play differently. As Variety saw that he, he had a Neath target on him, he had to leave they, because who knows what's happening. Repikas knew what was happening. It was he just, came from the sky. It was just more the telegraph is the issue. You've telegraphed what's about to happen. It was but in mid lane talking about uh -oh. telegraphing now. He didn't see that one coming. Shadow Nightmares. He will fall down to Comfrey with a great rotation from the boys of Titan one more time. And with Renz in the sky trying to find snipes, he does, but the sustain is too much. Seven to three are the kills. If you're just joining us, folks, this is the first match of two. We'll have North America coming at you in just a little bit. This one is the second part. It's the conclusion of the two-game set between Titan and Team Dignitas. Game one went the way of Titan very, very quickly, mm -hmm. largely on the back of player of the game, Confrey. This time around, a little bit slower. Dignitas still very much in it. The kills are seven to three. But if you're a fan of Smite, you know to look at the gold, and just a thousand gold separates these two teams. There's so many things to talk about in this game as well, because if you look through picks and bans, Al Kuang was left up and they picked it. Mm -hmm. And because of that, hold that thought. No, he's going to be fine. Nice but slow. because they picked Al Kuang, the team of Titan rallied around it and knew what they were going to do once they got him. And they didn't do the safe thing of put it in the jungle. Ataraxia went, give it me. I'm going to get counterpicked potentially because 
the Comfrey, you know, he so Variety gets the other pick. This is happening on cooldown. Variety finally responds in the correct fashion for his team. Here comes Athena as well. Taunted to the shield wall is not enough damage to take care of this assassin in the solo lane. Here comes Sir Kent. Frosty Egg Beads is strong, but you not can't beat that damage. The tick is damage the, the poison. Archers will bring down that kill yes. if they need to, and it'll drop. And that's what I was trying to tell you a minute ago about the telegraphing of yep. that. The Will Weaver comes out too early, and you give the game away. The team can make rotations. Athena can all in. Sir Kent can start her rotation, and now Prime is in trouble. Beads are down after the taunt, but there's really not much else coming. Uh, the stun will be good to stop the aggression out of Isis, Ooh, and yeah. they might look to turn that around. Well, on the backside, the double tap did connect from Repicast there, but he didn't jump to his hammer in time, so his Berserker Barrage Variety's is done in here. place. Variety, everybody's looking at Frosty Egg, and Pretty Prime does get the kill if Frosty Egg was allowed to stay alive just a little longer. Variety is level 14. He's swinging like a truck now, so he might be able to hurt, but unfortunately not given the opportunity for his team to clean up. Eight to four of the kills. A little bit more of an exciting game this time as well as the gold is pretty much even as it stands. Experience between these two teams. Well, that's a little bit back and forward as you look through the jungle as, and down through the mid lane. You can see Pretty Prime has a two level lead over Shadow Nightmare. Uh, and the Hunters. But the Hunters, yeah, the Hunters as well. But still, it's I'm pretty sure the experience must be just in Titan's favor. Gold Tree started off by Confrey. He did go the way of Soul Leader one more time, so does have the sustain and necessary. And Unravel as well will help him out. Yep. As long as nobody spots this, and you can see where Prime's position is here, he's there to support just in case they need it. I get mean, a free goal for you. Great call from Titan. In a world without Hog, mages are your new Hog. So Pretty Prime shows up just at the time to go ahead and clean that up and secure the Gold Fury. And with that, that is the big jump in the lead. 1,800 gold on the side of Titan. But when we said about experience a second ago, 5.4k in, in the side of Titan as well. Yeah. And that was before the Gold Fury pretty much because it doesn't give that much experience. And that's just seeing where the lead is really is in this game. Even though the gold is even, experience is more important to a lot of people oh, yeah. than gold in the early game. Good stun coming out from the middle laner on Team Dignitas. A little over aggressive Love is Titan. Way. Forced into the air is Thor. But don't be surprised if Repikos lands aggressively. Gonna land right back down where he started. Able to get out of there though is Team Dignitas. Kanye Life all by his lonesome now. Surrounded by poke. Team Dig. And he's gonna look to fall. Frezzy, the other support with the kill. Trade in the jungle between Variety and Atorex. They're just zoning each other away more than anything else there. But what you saw from Kanye there, where a lot of people were like, why did he turn back round? Well, he was looking for the big four-man ultimate, yeah. and the boys were ready for it and backed away. Dignitas Beautiful. got themselves in a good position Love now. Love this play by Team Dignitas, really internalizing the stuff after the stuff. That was such a small win. They got a support off of an awkward situation, immediately look to creep the rewards and take down the mid tower. Mid lane though, Neath might get caught out a little bit, has to beat some backflip away. Luckily Prime is there to support as well, but I love the call like you said from Dignus, it's just a shame they don't have the goal fury to go to. Luckily for Titan, they took it a few moments earlier. <laughs> That's definitely very true, and the gold with that mid tower is going to be slimmed down just a little bit. Don't forget, 500 gold for every tier one tower. That's 100 gold per player, so uh, does even up the game just a little bit. It's better for Dignitas this, but he's still not good enough right now. I feel the experience lead is a little bit too much that they've climbed ahead. The experience shouldn't be as high as it is in favor of Team Titan. Dignitas, however, like I said, they, we talked about this late game. They're looking strong for the late game. Right. Neef, we mentioned. Early played by Comfrey, he doesn't have the same sort of late game a Ren's will or a Kronos will. Ataraxia, however, on the back foot of that, he does. Yeah, it's all Ataraxia for Titan, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but as you said, there's a couple of different options. Sir Kett's gonna really excel in the late mid game and partially the late game with that Cobra's Kiss. Variety's gonna do the same. Uh, oh this God might change God. my thoughts on that engagement. Damage Poison is out on a Pretty Prime, dealing out all of his ults before he does fall. Frezzy. Good work from Dignitas. Comfrey, though, across the map. Did get the Will wow. Weaver on Frosty on the backside. The taunt in is actually actually a blinks of the wall. Looking for Frosty. The silence, though, from Shadow Nightmare will keep him at bay for a moment. But how long is a moment as the dragon comes out? Will he go back in for variety? He That's will. the question. He, he will. will. And he'll there find it, it as well. Right before the rewind comes out, Comfrey secures the kill out of Kanye life. Rather, the enemy it. hunter secures the kill on a Kanye life, not uh, but not that big of a deal for Titan. Still three members deep, and 
They still want to push this tower. Lucky enough, though, for Dignitas. There's no minions here. These guys right. cannot tank this way for now. Ataraxia, though, he might swing around the back looking for the potential pick if Renz chooses to stay. Renz trying to do back harpies here. Luckily, Ataraxia did not spot those minions being started. Otherwise, would have been a bad, bad show. But this is exactly what Titan's comp is all about. Raxia a little bit low, so he'll go and play the safe route and clean up that. While Confrey does take up the tower, uh, just, just a matter of time. Minions reached there, and once he saw Renz go away, there was nothing else stopping him. It was really good work from Dignitas to put the pressure on them, but it was the boys of Titan that turned it completely on its head. And now they've managed to take the tower. They've taken away the blue buff on the right-hand side. They're taking away the purple buff on the left-hand side. And, oh, Comfrey may get a little bit caught Renz here. is here. Blink in. Blink Where's the taunt with the beads? Every, every time Comfrey's been caught, He's beads, beads has been available. He's at Beads. And to be fair, Frezzy played that crystally perfect as well. Like, he charged in before he got auto, blinked ahead, ready for the, when the backflip happened. And most of the time when you were hunting, you're like, oh, my beads are on cold. Oh, damn. I'm dead. Confrey, every single time his beads have been up. And I mean, that's not a skill. That's that's sort of luck of the draw. It's, it's luck of the draw, but then you don't get yourself in the back. You wouldn't, would he have gone for, I guess he would have potentially gone for purple without having beads available. Bit risky though. I, I guess you give I guess you give credit for to to Confrey for not using beads unnecessarily. Every single time we've seen those beads activated, it would have spelt okay. death if he was crowd controlled. So, so this needs credit build. to him for having them up. Going over to him, Warrior Tabby Soul Eater, Ikvel, Execution. Now he's working on some crit, more than likely going to be Rage, and then maybe he's going to sell the Death Soul for the Deathbringer towards the end. I mean, this is essentially the Devo Gloves build with Soul, Soul Eater, Eater instead. instead of Devo Gloves. Um, this actually came out of a Twitch chat member. Honestly. I believe, I heard it was from a Twitch chat member as well. I wasn't sure, but I'd heard about it and people have tried it and it's worked variety out. Variety in some trouble. Ataraxia, really poking down Variety. Mm -hmm. That's This is what we see Two coming levels. Out. This is what we see out coming out of now, Kwong. He's got Buck of Toth and he's got Polynomicon, so that's going to apply the damage. And now, Titan, they're going to try and bait this Gold Fury. Here come the reinforcements from Dig, though, but look at the lineup for Titan. They're ready. They're poised. They're waiting for the opportunity. Dignitas taking two separate routes. See Sirket and Athena coming in from the right hand side and two softer targets coming in on the left and with that just their presence alone is to make Titan think twice about taking the objective. I think they could have got it there, but it looked like they wanted to try and break the game's back with that right. play more than anything. Tony mid lane though, it will connect onto Repicast, forcing out those beads, and on the backside the no escape connects. Some more beads are gonna get pulsed. Pull is good on to one, but it's just a support. Athena's got no problems with that, but here to change her mind Great is ball. Ataraxia. Blinks just forward to catch her out. Ultimate is Glarge, gobbles up. The support is Ataraxia. Looking to land safely. They're going to go from on the backside. The rewind will come off, but he will drop again before he can get it down. A great reinitiation from Repicas. Can he still on the front line below half health as the blink in from Prime will stun out and force Renz to the sky? Can he find the snipes to turn a kill? Renz got one. Renz missed two, but Renz does hit the third. That's going to chunk out the opponent's life. In comes Repicas right underneath the tower. Pop is good. Ooh, Heals bomb. up. Renz just enough to stay alive. Just enough. The wall double tap on the backside. The Ataraxia Dukes come around and clean that kill up and get himself out of dodge one more time. The tier two tower being pressured in mid by Titan. Now that will fall to the wayside. And now they've got themselves in a commanding position. Titan really swung this in that last sequence, taking out the right targets and then coming around mm -hmm. and taking the towers as well. And this is what I felt like with the Gold Fury play a minute ago. They could have done that then, but it looked like they were trying to just completely break the game's back. Why gold did not fire? In this situation, you've still got Repicas up, and sorry, not Repicas, uh, Frostiac up in the mid lane. Athena's up as well. Just too many threats. Uh, I mean, to be fair, the nowadays with the Fire Giant, is so there's so much potential to throw their game. Exactly. You've got a command and lead over. Why risk it? Why just play it safe and take the free objectives that are there? Titan really swinging this one in the last couple of minutes. We're, we're 22 and a half in, and up until this point, largely has been a tie game. We'll take a look at the graphs as we see that Cold Fury fall, and six... Point two thousand gold going the way of Titan, as well as a slew of five-digit experience as well. Team Dignitas up until this point has largely played strongly. I'm looking at Variety. The rewinds aren't coming out fast enough. And to be be fair, 
He's had three ultimates on him in that solo lane multiple times. Yeah. This is the point that he needs to take over. I mean, he's getting focused in the solo lane through the laning phase, right. the three-man combo over and over again with the Will Weaver coming across map. Mid lane, Isis and the um, Circuit haven't really been combined to kill Prime enough in this game. Prime's only died that once in mid lane. Kanye's the one that's been the feeder to an extent on the boys of Titan, but that's okay, he's in Ares front line. Titan's all here on the right-hand side looking at this tower. As Zayden did show us, though, Team Dignitas has a ward that everyone walked over. So it's no secret that Titan is here on the right-hand side no of the map. It's no secret. That's why Dignitas are pushing down the left. They're going to trade out the tier one towers, but they're not going to be able to trade out a fire giant on that side. That's for sure. Is this some sort of race here? Where are the boys of Dignitas? They know this fire giant's Dig going on. Dignitas is here. They're just a little bit too Great slow. Ball. Kanye live hitting the gas, gets a one pull, and now he's got a new belt. Dignitas sees that. They hear the chime, and Dignitas will disengage. And what do Dignitas get on the other side? Well, Frezzy and Ren stay together and they take down a tier 2 tower on that left, but they're going to lose a tier 2 tower on the right after the fire giant also falling. They're going to recall back to base and this Phoenix is looking threatened now. Oh, this is for sure a Phoenix attempt. It's up to Team Dignitas to really stop this. 7,000 plus a fire giant of is what Team Dignitas is sporting over their opponent. The blink taunt is good. Spirit Ball, not no so panic. much. Rostiak on the side does come in, give a kiss to Prime, who beads and then dashes away. There's nothing really been forced out the side of Titan, though. They've got that Fire Giant, and that will regen them if they've taken this amount of poke. They'll be fine. Ares Ultimate is down still. Uh, other than that, Titan has everything. Replica's not exactly a mid-team fight ultimate. Team Dignitas is trying to start the fights before Thor is able to get in the air. Replica started it, and now he will land, looking for the assassination. Not gonna he find will him. miss, and the rest of his team fighting on the front side. Bad mistake from Replica gets caught at the back there. Can't get out after throwing his hammer. So this attempt from Titan to take a Phoenix has been turned on its head now, uh -huh. because Dignitas want to continue the chase. They've got to be a little bit careful about a turnaround play from Titan. Frezzy looking for it, and there's the turnaround place Kanye blinked in the back. Blinked in the back, but he's all alone. Up in the air is Ataraxia. He takes worry. Frezzy with him and puts him in a box. Confrey, uh, Kanye Life gets a kill, and Ataraxia, worry. this is the book that Titan wrote. Everybody set up Ataraxia for the late game and let Ao Kuang go nuts. I said when they pushed out a base like that, they need to be careful about the turnaround, and that's exactly what happened. Kanye reinitiated at the same time Frezzy did, so he got picked off. Frezzy was left alone up against Ataraxia's Ao Kuang and the rest of his team, and now still, Four members have the fire giant. The phoenix has fallen, and they're going to try and end this one before the respawns happen, which it should be game this. Titan, are you going to take a 2-0 over Dignitas at the start of this week? Titan looking very, very strong. Now, when it came to game one, Hindu man, Dignitas didn't look too hot. That was all Titan's game. This time around, Dignitas did put up a great fight. Unfortunately for them, Titan does wind up taking the two games to none. Uh, the entire set goes the way of Titan. Much great work overall, honestly, from the side of Titan there. They had a game plan. They executed it to perfection. Mm -hmm. They went for a very CC-heavy composition. Their solo laner lacks the CC, but boy, does he have burst damage. <laughs> and that caused so many issues for the side. Then you just camp that lane all day. Yep. And even when that was going on, Titan was still able to sneak a goal, Fury. Yeah, I mean, it was it was really all there to set up Ataraxia and just by by variety picking Kronos as well, just gave Titan another reason to go ahead and camp that. But we all started here camping the solo lane. The ultimate out of Confrey <laughs> secures the kill angle. onto Variety. Uh, don't forget, though, that was a three-man kill. That was Ataraxia attacking off of the ultimate out of a Thor, and then Confrey put a dot on And as a reward, he got purple buff as well. <laughs> we saw him doing it. So... This time, this time around, we had the hunt. Last time around, we had the hunter win player of the game, Confrey. Now it's the other side of the map. The solo leader, Ataraxia, is our player of the game. Fantastic stuff on Al Kwong, and he is joining us now for the post game interview. Congratulations on your win. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks. How you guys doing? Not so bad. Thank you very much. I hope you don't mind me criticizing you about your god pool because it's been one of the concerns that a lot of people have had. Talk to us about it. Is, have you been expanding it quite, you know? rapidly or are we looking to just like get a decent mix of gods in that role yeah i mean when i swapped to solo uh, hunters were in the uh uh i guess we'll call it overpowered state so i just played <laughs> hunter solo you yeah. know it was good for me it worked out for the team so then i didn't really have a lot of time to practice other stuff mm -hmm. uh but now with the hunter nerfs i've been expanding a lot and really working on it so hopefully this split you'll see a lot more variety out of me 
variety of funny He's ones. He's on Dignitas. Uh-huh. <laughs> but this is actually interesting because, as Hindu Man said, you know, your, your god pool, you switched roles, it's, it's a question, and there's usually some sort of learning curve going. You bring out the advanced textbook of Al Kuang. What really brought you to play Al Kuang over some of the more, I don't know, safer, easier to learn solos? Well, he's pretty broken, right? <laughs> I mean, for me, when we come to Al Kuang with the draft, what we he is very, very, very strong sure. to the point where I will say I will happily take a losing matchup where I'm going to get behind. He's going to rotate me because when it comes to the mid game and the late game, Al Kuang will turn up and he will win the game. So, so it's kind of I'm okay to take that loss in lane so for the we, good of the game. How are we feeling? Looking forward to the next season then, to the rest of this season. You've up off to a good start, 2-0 against Dignitas. 1-1 one, one against Fnatic, who, to be honest, are like your top-tier rivals. We've got another game this week up against Myrmidons. How are you feeling about facing the almighty Mogau? Oh, we're going to find out who's Hades is best, right? Oh, <laughs> mirror match, money match. I'm down to see that. I'd watch that one. But but so uh, I actually want to get your opinion on, on Myrmidons. I mean, Titan has solidified themselves as a very strong team, not just in Europe, but across the world. You take a look at Myrmidons. They obviously have some sort of talent. Give me your gauge on what this French team can offer. Uh, they should be really, really scary, honestly. Uh, pretty much all of them have been in the scene for a very long time. You've got um, Jermaine and Dardes who have been playing ranked as almost ranked all-stars all this time. Sayo and Mogao have got their um, competitive history in the past. Get Fishes, he's been around um, and he's he's doing very well so far. His signature Fender is something to be scared of. So I think that they are a team to watch. I think they're going to turn heads. Fantastic. Now, uh, before we let you go, wh- uh, do you have any shout-outs or, or exciting things you want to tell everybody at home? Uh, you know, the usual stuff. Uh, thank you to everyone who's supporting Smite. Not just us, but Smite in general. It's... Um, you know, you make all this possible. So everyone who supports Titan or supports AFK or Myrmidons or whoever you support, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep, you know, supporting and keep being awesome. All right, well, thank you very much. One more time, that's Ataraxia, the solo laner and player of the game of game number two for Titan. Uh, fantastic stuff coming out from him. But next time, next time, I'm going to get him to talk smack. Always the politician. Well, see, I mean, to be fair, he can talk some smack. I've I don't it. believe it. I've heard on the down though he can. But I don't believe it. Maybe do you it just got to join the battle bus. It was a good interview from Ataraxia, though, in fairness. Like, he, he said what I wanted to hear, honestly, yeah. about the solo lane. Did great work for themselves, and now the boys of Titan find themselves at the top of the SPL right now. Yeah, fantastic stuff coming out of Europe. But don't forget, that's not the end of the SPL. We are going to bring you a North American matchup as well. Take, Stay tuned for some stuff out of Enemy Esports. I'll be back with Kevin. We'll see you then.
destiny.